It's only been a few months since Yellowstone ended, and a lot of fans are dealing with separation anxiety with the series. For today's video, we'll be discussing the recent publication of Deadline's It Starts on the Page, and focus on the read of Taylor Sheridan's script for Yellowstone Season 4 premiere. All this and more in today's video, so stay tuned! It Starts on the Page, read Taylor Sheridan's script for Yellowstone Season 4 premiere. Taylor Sheridan realized he needed a change after a rocky experience with acting. In 2013, he began writing screenplays, and his dedication paid off when Yellowstone became Paramount Network's first written series and flagship show, spawning spin-offs and earning awards. The Half the Money Season 4 opener of Yellowstone is the latest part of Deadline's annual series It Starts on the Page, which showcases the script that serves as the creative backbone of the buzzy shows that will define the now underway TV award season. The screenplays in the series are all up for Emmy consideration this year, and Deadline chose them based on a number of factors, including critical acclaim, a variety of networks and platforms, and a mix of well-known and lesser-known shows. Yellowstone is a portrayal of life on America's tumultuous new frontier by John Linson and Taylor Sheridan. Kevin Costner plays John Dutton, a Montana native who owns the largest contiguous ranch in the United States. In order to fight against powerful, encroaching neighbors who recognize the worth of his land, the patriarch enlists the help of his offspring. So what happened during the Half the Money episode last season? Of course, we're not going to repeat the whole 47-page dialogue of the episode, but a recap of the episode is a good way to refresh our minds on what happened in this season opener. Nobody died last season, as it turned out, but that doesn't rule out the possibility that its events will shape the newest outing and the minds of those involved. And in the last minute of Half the Money, the first half of a two part debut, one expected killings to occur, kicking off what one expects will be a lot of avenging bloodshed. After all, you can't simply target the state's most powerful family and expect no repercussions. We started right in the middle of the devastation from last season, with gunfire and bombs flying everywhere. Casey murders every single one of his adversaries, but takes a bullet to the shoulder in the process. Beth staggers out of the office with much of the flesh on her back flapping loose. Young Tate shot a man to save Monica. Jimmy was perhaps dead? It felt a little wobbly towards the end, trying to figure out whether the show would genuinely commit to any of this after such a whirlwind of intense sequences. Half the money spools forward in time, to a bearded John waking up from a coma, with Beth at his bedside, alive but annoyed. After a brief flashback to 1893, and presumably a Dutton ancestor being all friendly with some Native Americans, who want to bury one of their own on what is now his land, but was once theirs. At the hospital, Beth encounters a young boy named Carter, in whom she clearly recognizes herself, or Rip. But it's not until later that we learn that Casey has survived, while Beth in Rip's cabin has unfortunately perished. Jimmy is also alive, albeit enduring severe physical therapy. He's one of the items on a lengthy list of things Beth tells John they need to talk about, though she refuses to talk about any of them when he arrives home, gets dressed, shaves, and dismisses his new nurse. Casey appears in a ghillie suit at this point. What are you hunting? John inquires. Whatever's hunting us, the response says, which is telling because no one knows who ordered the Dutton's hit, even if they'd like to. In half the money, Thomas Rainwater, who remains a suspect, helped Mo examine a chatty casino patron in the traditional manner of their forefathers, not out of any particular life of John, but because whatever came for his land was likely coming for theirs next. That whoever is clearly going to be the central mystery for at least the next several episodes. Jamie Beth believes, but that would be too simple. Rip has a different plan. Rip was almost certainly involved in it some way. Perhaps not. Rip, in any case, slams a rattlesnake in his face and mutters, good riddance, as the venom kills him. As we all know, pilot episodes are important since they set the tone for what will happen for the rest of the season, which is exactly what this episode did. Not only that, it provided answers to some hanging questions, but at the same time, it also raise new ones, which will keep viewers glued to the screen and leave them wanting more. Since we're talking about flashbacks and the likes, it made us look back and wonder, what made Taylor Sheridan's Yellowstone such a hit? Yellowstone was created out of the landscape by co-creator Taylor Sheridan, who grew up in rural Texas. For his 2015 murder thriller Cicero and neo-westerns Hell or High Water and Wind River, the actor-turned-writer-director has already received critical acclaim. Sheridan has a knack for depicting the tensions that exist at the intersections of places, cultures, and people. No wonder Paramount Networks confidently granted him a straight-to-series order for its first scripted show, one that tantalizingly promised that the West Wild had not vanished. It had simply taken on a new shape. For starters, Yellowstone was a breath of fresh air in neo-Western drama, which piqued a lot of viewers' interests. When Yellowstone aired on June 20th, 2018, the enthusiastic response from those gathered around their 65-inch campfires was yeehaw! John Dunton was a one-of-a-kind American hero. As the sixth-generation owner of Yellowstone, the country's largest contiguous ranch, which borders the famed National Park, the widower was wealthy and powerful, effectively governing Montana from the shadows. He could ride, rope, and communicate with his own helicopter through radio. He resided in a log mansion among gorgeous mountains, and the cinematically stunning series is a homage to this country's natural beauties that will have you singing America the Beautiful. Now that the show has established its main protagonist, there must be a clear goal that is jam-packed with obstacles that he needs to get through. John develops a dark, vicious side to defend his family's legacy. He goes up against business owners, developers, and Native American tribes. Chief Thomas Rainwater, the fictional Broken Rock Reservation's leader, is alternatively a 
friend and an adversary, played by Gil Birmingham. There are thrilling shootouts, vehicle chases, kidnappings, sabotage, bombings, and sting operations. John's three older children are his primary backup, although the bickering siblings are almost as liable to shoot each other as trespassers. Along with the main character who's already charismatic enough, the show's supporting characters also add a lot of spice and spunk to the overall setting. Beth, John's daughter, played by Kelly Riley, was an instant fan favorite as a cigarette-smoking, booze-guzzling, daring financial whiz. Her weak spot is ranch supervisor Rip Wheeler, played by Cole Hauser, who, like the most committed bunkhouse occupants, is literally branded with a Y. The Dutton family dysfunction has been revealed over four seasons, resulting in shocking reveals that have delighted fans and added an increasing depth to each character. Beth and her brother, slash sworn enemy, lawyer Jamie, played by Wes Bentley, have beaten each other up, but Luke Grimes Casey, the golden child, and a former Navy SEAL is the most violent of the trio. Yellowstone is a cheerful celebration of ranch and country life, with big amounts of authenticity despite the brutal battles and family intrigue. The cast includes genuine cowboys and real rodeo stars Jangle Spurs in the corral. This show was shot on a real Montana reservation and ranch. Yellowstone's inhabitants exist on our planet. When you mix all these contributing factors that make Yellowstone so appealing, then voila, you have a massive fan base. All this has resulted in a thriving fan base. Hundreds of thousands of people have watched YouTube videos that break down the episodes. If you Google Beth Dutton fashion, you'll find pages and pages of results selling knockoffs of her ensembles. Do you want to own your own Yellowstone tee, cap, or hoodie? You are protected. When you wear the Y branded clothes, you're greeted by fellow fans saying, find your tribe, according to one Amazon reviewer. Yellowstone has clearly discovered something. It's a major subject. This dread of losing someone you love or a place you love, Sheridan says. This is rather universal. And we can't get enough of Dutton's conflict. In today's fragmented watching landscape, these ratings are unheard of. The most recent season finale drew 9.3 million viewers, a new high. In addition, the series has generated three spin-offs so far. Two were prequels. 1883, about the first Dutton family to travel west by wagon trail, premiered in 2021 as the most watched cable series premiere since 2015, and the depression will resume in 1932. Another drama still in progress. 6666, pronounced as the Four Sixes, is not only set at the same time as Yellowstone, but also on a real Texas ranch. America, of course, can't wait for more problematic homes on the range. Maybe it's because the Dutton family holds on when life throws them a curveball and inspires us to do the same. And just like that, we're already out of time. Do you have any theories on what will happen next in Season 5? Let us know in the comments section below. Before you go, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to our channel with the notification bell on for more videos like these. Thanks for watching and see you next time!